Hi, everybody. In this video, we'll investigate the probability of multi-stage events. We'll differentiate between independent and dependent events, and we'll develop probability rules for finding the probability of these multi-stage events. So let's dive right into an example. Here's our first one. A die and a coin are both tossed. We would like the probability that the die shows a five and the coin shows a heads. So notice this is a multi-stage event because two things are occurring. We're flipping a coin, we're tossing a die, we would like the probability of getting a heads with the coin and a five on the die. And the first thing we need to note here is that these are called independent events. As far as I know, coins and dice don't talk to each other. They don't exert an influence on each other. Here, two events are independent if the success of one event does not affect the success of a second event. The fact that we get a heads on the coin should have no influence as to what happens with the die. So one way to investigate this is by making a tree diagram. We could first look at how the coin behaves. We could certainly get a heads or a tails. And from there, if we get a heads, there are six different outcomes for the die. And same if we had a tails on the coin. And we could multiply these out and we could see that there's a total of 12 different outcomes here and only one of them gives what we would like here, the heads and the five. There are 12 equally likely outcomes. Only one of them is what we would consider a success, a heads and a five. So therefore the probability is 1 12. But that leads us to our important rule here for multi-stage events. When more than one event is being performed, we multiply the probabilities. Think back to that tree di diagram as a reason for why. So if we use that uh, formula here with our coin and die example, we see the probability of getting both a heads and a five at the same time, just the probability of heads, which is one half, times the probability of getting a five on the die, which is one sixth. We multiply those, we have one twelfth. Those are independent events. Let's look at a second example here though. Let's deal cards from a deck of cards. Imagine I have a deck of cards here. I shuffle them and I deal out the first two cards. What is the probability that a player is dealt two tens from a standard deck of cards? And there's something big here. Usually when we play probability games with cards, we deal out cards one at a time and we don't replace them. You'll want to be on the lookout for the instructions without replacement. Usually when we're drawing things or dealing things from a population, they're being dealt without replacement. So what's different about this example? In the last example, the coin and the die have no influence over each other. But here, the fact that I deal a card does influence what happens on the next card, because there'll be less cards in the deck. In that situation, we call these events dependent events. Two events are dependent if the success of one event does affect the success of a second event. Let's see what we mean here with our cards. If you think about our cards, we deal into our shuffled deck of cards, and the first time, the probability that we get a 10 is 4 out of 52. If they're in yellow, I see it's a little bit tough to see. But the probability of drawing a 10 from a deck of cards is 4 out of 52. And now imagine that first card is on the table. Now we draw a second card. Think about how many cards are left and how many successes are there. Well, if you think about it, now the probability on our second draw that we get a 10 after we got the first 10 is now 3 out of 51. There will be 51 cards remaining. Three of them are what we would like to have. That's three out of 51. And keep in mind, when we do multi-stage events, we multiply the probabilities. So the total probability here of getting a 10 and then another 10 is four over 52 times three over 51. You'll notice we'll wanna do some reducing here. Three over 51 is one of those goofy fractions that does reduce, it's 1 17th. So the probability of getting two tens in sequence from a shuffled deck of cards is one over 221. Let's look at one last example here. What is the probability that you draw three consecutive red cards from a shuffled standard deck of cards, again, without replacement? Think about, we're drawing three cards. It's a three-event, multi-stage experiment. We start with 52 cards, and we draw one. How many are left? How many reds would there be? And if you think about the work here, we can see that the probability of drawing three consecutive red cards is given here. Now, it gets a little messy, but that top line of work is really what you want to focus in on. 26 over 52, and then 25 over 51, and then 24 over 50. That's the important part of the work. The rest of it is you might want to reduce it, or it's okay to get a calculator out. You can verify that that reduces to 2 over 17. So keep in mind, multi-stage events, we multiply the probabilities, and we have to differentiate between independent and dependent events. 